Hello, everyone. My name is Evan Freiberger, and we've just got day after day after day after day after day of severe weather. All those green and yellow colors you saw represent different categories of severe weather, with the green meaning one, the yellow meaning two out of five, and the orange meaning three out of five, meaning we have got quite the stretch here. This is actually going to be a pretty long week of severe weather and potentially tornado threats starting tomorrow, moving all the way into Sunday. Also, today marks the fact that we are about four days away from the first wave of our bigger trough coming into the United States, meaning today we're going to be comparing deterministic models instead of comparing our ensembles. Now, ensembles are averages, deterministic models are one model run, but it also opens up and allows you to look at other factors of the storm that you typically couldn't really do with an ensemble. So we're not going to really be getting into the nitty gritty de details in terms of day three through six, but in terms of tomorrow, we actually can. So let's go ahead and start the forecast off with that. So day two, which is tomorrow, you can see that we do have a marginal risk in parts of Oklahoma, Texas, going into Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, and we've got a two out of five for severe weather here in the yellow. It's going to be for parts of Oklahoma, Texas, including Northeast Dallas going into Arkansas, and that includes areas like Fort Smith. One of the risks that we will have with this storm coming into tomorrow is going to be a chance for tornadoes. Now, it's not going to be a very high chance for tornadoes. As you can see, this green represents a 2% chance. It's a 2% chance you're going to see a tornado within a 25-mile radius of you. Our hail risk is also going to be elevated, as you can see here in the yellow. It's going to be for a 15% chance of hail while the green is a five percent chance for that hail as well and also looking at our wind the same areas here are going to be susceptible to some damaging winds potentially 60 miles per hour and above that's going to be a 15 percent chance in the yellow and then a five percent chance in the green yet again now coming over to our h triple r model you can see over the next couple of days in this region it's going to be pretty dry not a whole lot of stuff happening but then by the time we move into around 3 or 4 p.m here on the 12th you can see that we start to see some conditions convection starting to happen with this storm. Looking at our trough here, you can see that we do have a little bit of a low pressure system here. We're not talking about a big time low pressure by any means, but believe it or not, this storm is actually going to have implications for the storm to come after this. The big storm that we're talking about bringing more widespread risks up over there into the Ozarks, the Ohio Valley to the southeast, all the way to the east coast. Winds at the surface are coming south to the north, so moisture advection will be trying to happen there. Looking at our dew points, you can see that we are in the 60s here here, all the way up to pretty much about Dallas here. So that's about where we're going to be expecting to see our severe weather. But you can see that our area of instability here is pretty skinny. So a lot of these storms will struggle to be more discreet. They're probably going to form more into a linear line pretty quickly, given the fact that there's just not a whole lot of real estate for any other storms to kind of form out over here in front of the line. And looking at our upper level winds here, you can see they are moving, uh, at least up here in this area, kind of up into to the north and east and then the further you go south the more that they're moving to the east so we are going to have a decent amount of forcing with this storm so we can definitely expect widespread storms to try to become mature along this line looking at our 850 millibar winds were a little bit on the weaker side but still anywhere from 30 to 35 knots is going to be enough to potentially cause some brief spin-ups with some of these storms that fire here so definitely need to be keeping that in mind as these storms come through now one of the reasons why we are probably going to get a little bit more hail with this storm is because the lapse rates with this storm is going to be pretty steep I'm about anywhere from eight to nine lapse rates which typically when you're looking for severe weather you're looking for about six degrees lapse rates and you can think of lapse rates kind of like what the opposite of a body of water feels like when you're swimming in it typically at the top of the water is warmer water and below it the further down you go is some cooler water if you ever swam in a lake you have experienced this so just flip that upside down and the quicker that warm water transitions into that colder water you get higher lapse rates so instead of having water we're talking about the air above your head and that warm air near the surface the quicker that it becomes cooler above your head the higher the lapse rates are so there's definitely going to be a chance for some quickly growing thunderstorms out here with the potential for some hail but given the fact that we have a little bit stronger lower level winds means the hail should stay non-significant given the fact that any storm that does rotate will start to fling those little hail embryos out of the core which means that they won't really have a whole lot of time to grow now moving into to 5 and 6 p.m. here you can see that most of these storms up here to the north are going to be elevated but they are going to be also producing some hail and some potentially larger hail with those storms 
Further down to the south and east, our shear environment is going to be a little bit more favorable, and that's where a lot of our forcing is going to be. Our dew points could potentially be as well. But these storms are going to be struggling to become surface-based, which is why our tornado threat is a little bit more conditional. But if we see any improvement of that over the next couple of days, we might even get a 5% tornado risk out here. As we move into around 9 p.m., you can see this line kind of comes out of Texas and into Louisiana, parts of Arkansas and Oklahoma. We will still have some severe weather capabilities up here in the northeast portion of this storm but generally our instability is going to be dying with the sunlight as the sun goes away less heating don't really have a whole lot of instability with this storm so it's going to start to fall apart uh, as we move into the into the nighttime hours and then as we move into the next day maybe some rumbles of thunder still exist over here into southern arkansas now, as we move into the day after tomorrow there will be an isolated severe weather threat out over here near mississippi and alabama we're not overly concerned about this right now a lack of instability will allow how these storms to struggle and the trough geometry is a little bit off for really anything significant so not really worried about the day after tomorrow but if anything changes we will definitely let you guys know but if you live in central alabama down into southern alabama and eastern mississippi just know that if you have any outdoor plans like barbecues or golfing or playing with your kids at a playground could have some issues there as you might get rained on and potentially see some severe weather going into day four which is going to be friday you can see our next risk here extends all the way from southern Louisiana through the southeast into Alabama up to the Tennessee Valley through Kentucky then up into the Ohio Valley and the northern Ozarks into parts of Iowa Wisconsin going into Missouri and Arkansas as well and then in this orange area we're talking about the chances a little bit more elevated chances uh, for severe weathers and the potential for tornadoes over here into eastern Arkansas northern Mississippi going into Tennessee Kentucky Illinois and parts of Missouri and that also includes areas like St. St. Louis, Little Rock, Memphis, South Haven over here in Mississippi. One of the things I do want to note, though, with this storm is we are still a little bit uncertain of what's going to happen with it. This little leading wave here is pretty much going to mediate our entire severe weather threat as we get closer and closer because of how close it is to our main storm that we're going to be watching here. It might scoop up a little bit too much instability and leave a little bit of a cold front boundary, keeping that instability further to the coast. The further off the coast that instability and moisture is after the storm moves through the more to the south that moisture will be by the next wave comes through as i continue to push this forward you can see that as by the time we get into around uh you know anywhere from 1 to 4 p.m we start to see initiation mainly on the northeastern quadrant uh, of our storm and that's going to eventually zip down all the way down into the southeast as the storm gets its act together still looking at the chances here for a sub 980 low pressure system which again is going to be a very potent low pressure system and you can see at this point this storm is already neutrally to negatively tilted just as it starts to begin its life and that orientation is important positively tilted means it's tilted this way usually you have more parallel lines overlapping the area of forcing neutrally tilted still can have some pretty decent storm interactions with that but negatively tilted is typically the most favorable for severe weather and that's what appears to be what we're going to be dealing with as this moves uh, into the Kansas and Nebraska area and now you can see with these little tight lines across on the western side and then moving down into New Mexico and Texas these are going to be responsible for potentially causing some blizzards these are the surface winds as we move into the 14th at around 4 p.m. and you can see that we already have elevated 30 to 40 knot winds which is about 35 to 45 miles per hour same down here into Texas so we're going to be watching for some blizzard conditions up here in the north and some dangerous fire conditions all the way from New New Mexico down into eastern Texas. Looking at our dew points though, you can see our moisture is pretty far to the south. And as I push this forward, eventually it starts to move more to the north and east, but never really quite makes it north of Arkansas. So for the most of the portion here of the 14th, tornadoes will struggle. Now they won't be impossible up here, but we'll probably be seeing some briefer and weaker tornadoes the further north you go, with our main axis of tornado activity being down here into parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, going into parts of Illinois, down into Kansas and Tennessee. And looking at where our difluence aloft is or our divergence, uh, you can see that our main area of wind shear is still pretty flat here with our main area of forcing back 
in through those same areas. So where that little tongue of moisture intercepts our forcing, that's where we're going to see a lot of our storms try to mature. Looking at the surface base cape here, you can see it's pretty darn skinny. Prefrontals will be hard to get with this skinny of, of a, an instability profile, but you can see that potentially we could have 600 joules per kilogram all the way up the leading edge of this. Now, typically that's not enough for strong tornadoes, but given the amount of wind shear that we're going to have in the upper levels of the atmosphere and then also in the lower levels of the atmosphere, which are pretty elevated. I mean, these, these are definitely going to be the cause for a lot of spin in the atmosphere. So wherever those intersect, which is really over here into Missouri, down through Arkansas and Mississippi, is where we're really going to see those storms start to fire off and have that potential for some severe weather and tornadoes. And the SPC is already using wording like strong tornadoes possible on day four. So that's certainly going to exist, but it seems like it's going to be further down to the south and that northern mode will mainly be a linear line with some potentials for some briefer and weaker spin-ups up there. Now, as I push this further into the future, you can see that, that line eventually spreads down to the south, but the GFS isn't really picking that up very well. One of the things that we can use to get a good understanding of where our instability is going to, to produce thunderstorms along with our trough geometry and our upper and lower air patterns is by looking at flash density, which kind of shows you where our thunderstorms will be. And as this trough ejects into the region, you can see we do start to get some lightning starting mainly over there in Missouri and Louisiana. I'm sorry, I'm at Iowa. And then down here near Louisiana as well, we have some thunderstorms there. And then as we move into around 1 p.m. here on the 15th, you can see that lightning starts to spread all the way down into Arkansas, into parts of Mississippi, moving into the, to the next day, which we'll be talking about here in a second, you can see we have widespread lightning all the way from the Ohio Valley uh, down into Alabama. But it does give you an understanding on where the storms could be firing and producing lightning and potentially severe weather and that tornado threat. So to summarize, when you look at our models here, I really do think the northern mode is going to be primarily damaging winds with some smaller chances for tornadoes. And our main corridor of our tornado risk will be back down here into Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee, where that instability interacts with the forcing and our lower level and upper level jet. Further up to the north, there will still be a chance, but it won't be as high in my opinion. But still, there will be a chance for some stronger tornadoes if we can get mature storms up there. Now, moving on to day five, things get a little interesting as well. You can see we have an enhanced risk over here for most of Alabama, parts of Georgia into Tennessee in areas like Mississippi and parts of Louisiana and a slight risk that extends all the way from Louisiana to Florida, all the way up into the Ohio Valley, like Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, as as well, coming over to our G. FS model, you can see that as those storms kind of lift off and kind of die off overnight, as we move into the 15th, we have yet another a little shortwave trough kind of make its way into the Mississippi, Alabama area with a line of thunderstorms possible all the way into Mississippi, northern Alabama, central Tennessee into Kentucky. Now, looking at our 300 millibar winds here to look at where we're going to have forcing, you can see that we do have an area here really into Tennessee and Kentucky where there is a going to be a lot of forcing. So up here could definitely see those chances uh, for some severe weather and potentially a tornado threat there. Surface base instability is sitting at around a thousand joules per kilogram. So pretty much right here on the northern portion of this instability is probably where we're going to see the biggest chance for tornadoes. Given the fact that our forcing down here further to the south is going to be weak, but if that can nose right up into this area of divergence where we see those wind barbs going up here and then further down to the south, they're going in this way. So just really, if this instability can make it all the way up to maybe Florence or just at the south of Nashville, that's probably where our strongest tornado risk will end up being, in my opinion. But tornadoes, potentially even strong tornadoes, will be possible all the way down this line. There's just going to be less forcing, so we'll be relying on storm mergers and things like that and happenstance a little bit more to the south. Now, our upper level winds as the storm moves through here are going to be pretty strong as the storm comes through. Our lower level winds are also going to be pretty strong with the strongest lower level winds going to be in northern Alabama, also into parts of Tennessee and Kentucky. Definitely feel like we could get that enhanced risk maybe a little bit further to the north uh, with this event. If these uh, solutions still hanging on the models as we get closer, because we are technically within our five day range here, so we can 
put some trust on what these models are showing now. And you mix all those together and you're going to have some storms out here that are going to have the potential for some tornadoes. You definitely got to keep an eye over there for Kentucky, Tennessee, going into Alabama and Mississippi as we move into Saturday as well. Now, as this storm continues off to the east, we're going to be entering uh, into the 16th here where we could have a last minute hurrah here with some of our severe weather over here in the east coast. This is going to be for Sunday. And as you can see, we do have an area of a slight risk all the way from Pennsylvania into New Jersey through Maryland, Delaware, Virginia, going into North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. And the reason why that is, is by the time this kind of low pressure system moves off to the north and east, we could see a little bit of a resurgence of our moisture, meaning we could have some pretty widespread damaging winds and a tornado risk all the way really from Maryland down into parts of Florida. A whole lot of divergence here, so forcing will be weak, but there is some subtle forcing here in and along the coast. You can kind of tell, got some wind barbs moving up in this direction, and then maybe a little bit further to the east, the wind barbs are moving uh, just off of the coast. So there will be a little bit of subtle forcing with that line of storms. Our upper level winds will still be pretty potent, and so will our lower level winds. So there will definitely be some potential here for some spin-ups uh, as this storm moves through. But as you can see, our lower level wind lines, our little flags over here, are moving generally in the same direction as our initiating boundary here and the same direction as our upper level winds, meaning we will be mainly dealing with linear line of storms, kind of similar to what we had last time over here uh, in the East Coast. We are also going to take the first look at our wind gusts here going over the next couple of days. And as you can see today, we're going to have a little bit of gusty winds over there into the plains going into the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. Then our first little bit of storms that comes through, that first little trough uh, that comes through into tomorrow is going to bring some wind over there into the southern plains and into the southeast and then eventually you can start to see our bigger storm come through here and first it's going to start off here by around the 14th in the morning hours with the fire risk over here for new mexico going into texas it's going to be really dry air out here so really watch out wherever you see these yellows and kind of brighter reds that's where we're going to be expecting uh, to see potentially a critical to extreme fire risk to be a two out of three and a three out of three for fires whenever fires do try to form will try to grow pretty fast and then on the back side of this storm you can see with those tight wind gradients on the back side anywhere where snow could fall which you can see is a possibility those are going to be blizzard conditions there into south dakota going into nebraska also in the front of the storm our pressure gradient is going to be pretty tight as well so our line of storms is going to be back over here in this region but all the way out in front we could easily have 40 to 50 mile per hour winds for a couple of hours before the line of storms even gets there in the ohio valley and that's going to push off into areas like like Indiana as we start to move into 1 a.m., Ohio as well, and then that is eventually going to track up into the Great Lakes where we can see some pretty hefty gusts in and along the coast with further inland experiencing anywhere from 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts. And eventually, as we move into the later portions here of the 15th, you can see our winds uh, along and just in front of this line of storms moving into northern Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky are going to be seeing anywhere from 50 to 60, potentially even 70 mile per hour wind gusts up there. And then further down to the south, we're talking about 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. So definitely a lot of instances here of uh, and potential for some damaging winds really all around this storm. Anywhere from a blizzard to a fire, to just straight line damaging winds are going to be possible uh, with this storm. And then eventually going to get windy over there in the coast up there in the northeast. And then eventually that kind of moves out of our hair and the winds calm down as we move into the 17th. So looking at our models, do I think that this storm is going to be the tornado outbreak of the year? No. No. Do I think this is going to be the craziest storm that we're going to see this year? No, not even close. I do think, though, that we could easily get a technical tornado outbreak with this storm. But keep in mind, the criteria for a tornado outbreak is pretty low. I think a lot of people associate tornado outbreaks with like 20 plus tornadoes. But if you didn't know, the uh, NWS says that the, t the threshold for tornado outbreaks is anywhere between six and nine tornadoes. But I really do think they need to revise that at the general public's imagination kind of runs wild when they hear that word. So I do think that tornadoes will be possible. A little bit briefer and weaker further up the north you go. And then we're going to have a little corridor here from really just into Mississippi and Arkansas where stronger tornadoes will be possible. I think it's going to be hard to get into that rapid fire kind of tornado threat where we're seeing tornado after tornado. But I think it will be a little bit more prevalent than the last storm we had. We're still about three or four days out from this event. So a lot of things will still change as we get our higher resolution models yet. But we are starting to get close to that range of accuracy. So more information will come out. And if you want to learn the newness 
info that ever comes out with this storm, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications as it does help us notify you when we get new changes or if we go live. We're going to be live <laughs> pretty much almost every single day, most likely starting on Wednesday, but we'll have to see how those storms end up panning out. Thank you so guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys on the next video.